Thank you very much, and welcome to our little television show here tonight. Beautiful BBC Theater, Shepherd's Bush Green, London, England. I can't believe it, I'll tell you. I'm so excited to be over here and to be doing a television show like this because, well, one of the main reasons I get to try a lot of things that I've never done before in my life. Like I'm gonna get to dance later on. I do a dance number, maybe not Fred Astaire, but maybe Bing Crosby, <laughs> you know? And by the end of the week, or the end of the six weeks, six weeks, every Sunday night, I'm gonna be Fred Astaire. Right here on this stage, you won't believe it. We have some, I think we've got some great shows planned for you. I have some very good friends with me. Uh, two people I want you to meet from uh, back in the United States, the people that wrote Country Roads with me are Bill and Taffy Danoff, they'll be on the show. We have Pan's People, Five of the most beautiful ladies you have ever seen. They're the ones I get to dance with. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be far out. Our special guest tonight is the star of Godspell here in London, Mr. David Essex. And I think it's going to be a great show. I hope you enjoy yourselves. And to start off with this carnival-like atmosphere that we're going to create right here, I want you to please welcome my good friends, Bill and Taffy Danoff. Tick taco in the Mexican cafe by the friendly topless car wash that we pass along the way through the automotive hall of fame, all framed in orange and gray, and the camera slowly pans across the airport in LA.
in the sky And there's hordes of hungry bogarts Crying tears they learn to cry With their names on painted billboards Like the critics flashing by Slipping in and out of focus Like the smog in both my eyes We're all singers in a choir We're all players in a play But they'd have to pay me Eternal critics view all the existential changes that the writer puts us through. Where the best of all is make believe and the worst of dreams come true. So I say so long to Hollywood and the rest is up to you. Kathy, flying back to Nashville. I love that song. I, I'm not from Nashville myself, although we do a lot of country music. Uh, I come from Aspen, Colorado in the United States. It's out in the Rocky Mountains, and it's a very famous, very well-known ski resort there. And it's just about the most beautiful place that I've ever seen. Uh, I get homesick every once in a while, especially when I talk about it, you know. But London, England. Here I am in London. I tell you, I've been going around. I've been seeing some of the sights and everything, you know. I saw Westminster Abbey the other day. I really think that's incredible, man. I can't imagine what it's going to be like when they get it finished. <laughs> we, were, we were at uh, St. Paul's Cathedral, which I think is incredible also. As a matter of fact, I thought Americans were the only people who could build a really beautiful building like that and then put skyscrapers up and other buildings all around so that nobody can see it. But you guys have got something on that, too, I guess. <laughs> I had a little thing that happened to me there. I was saying they have this uh, whispering gallery, I guess it's called. And I was standing there minding my own business. And this lady who was next to me thought that I said something that I think somebody on the other side of the hall said. And uh, she let me know about it in no uncertain terms. I, I said, I'm, I'm innocent. I mean, I, I wouldn't say anything like that to somebody that I don't know. She said, innocent my foot, dirty old man, blap me. <laughs> One of the nicest things that's happened to me since I've been here. <laughs> but it's okay, you know. I mean, it's springtime and everybody's a little emotional. The parks are green, flowers are blooming, lovers walking around hand in hand, arm in arm. I saw one couple, they were kind of walking by me. This was in Hyde Park. And uh, they were looking at each other really very, very tenderly, you know. And the guy said, do you think Sunderland can win the cup? <laughs> so, <laughs> and then to see where else have I been? We've been traveling around. I love all the squares and all the other little parks, you know, and places like Lancaster Gate and Highgate and Queens Gate. All we have in our country is the Watergate. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, especially in Washington, have been saying that President Nixon is really not doing a job of running the country properly, you know, with all this business going on about the Watergate. But one of his aides cleared that up. He said, how can you expect a president to run the country properly without knowing what the Democrats are doing? <laughs> <laughs> I can 
can't understand that. <laughs> no, thanks, I thought he put it very well, you know. But also, like, one of the things I really admire about the British, and especially being here in London, is you people are so very, very polite and correct, you know. If you were to walk into a bar over in our country, this guy probably says, what do you want, Mac? <laughs> but over here, you walk into a pub, and the fella says, good evening, sir. I'm sorry you're too late. It's closing time. <laughs> but the mustard is free. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> when I flew over here, I was going to fly on a British Airlines because I wanted to get the chance to, to meet some stewardesses and sort of have a little go-ahead on getting used to the language. But I was told that uh, you cannot talk to a British stewardess uh, without a formal introduction. I want you to know but that is not true. All you need is a note from your mother. <laughs> I always carry one with me everywhere I go. <laughs> they have these books on the planes that are really ridiculous. They tell you all kind of things about, you know, the proper things to do and how to deal with people, and they have great lines in them. They say stuff like, uh, British women are reserved for British men. <laughs> and uh, there are two kinds of English cooking. Italian and Chinese. <laughs> now, I think that's great. <laughs> but anyway, I like to fly a whole lot, and flying over here, like I said, was, was fun. And the only aspect of flying that I don't like is when you have to leave somebody that you care for a great deal and leave home and go out on the road. And I wrote a song about that. This was about, about six years ago, I guess. And I'd like to do it for you. It's called Leaving on a Jet Plane. All my bags are packed, I'm ready to go I'm standing here outside your door I hate to wake you up to say goodbye But the dawn is breaking, it's early morn The taxi's waiting
I'm so pathetic that I always have found it best Instead of getting them off my chest I let them rest unexpressed I hate parading my serenading As I'll probably miss a bar But if this ditty is not too pretty At least it'll tell you how great you are You're the top You're the Coliseum you're the top, <laughs> you're the Louvre Museum, you're a melody in a symphony by Strauss, you're an ascot bonnet, Shakespeare's sonnet, you're Mickey Mouse, you're the Nile, you're the sour of Pisa, you're the smile on the Mona Lisa. I'm a total wreck, a worthless check, a flop. But if baby, I'm the bottom, you're the top. Woo! You're the top. You're Mahatma Gandhi. You're the top. You're Napoleon Brandy. You're the nimble tread of the feet of Fred Astaire. You're an O'Neill drama, you're Whistler's mama, you're Camembert. You're repose, you're Inferno Dante. You're the nose of the great Durante. I'm a frightened frog without a log to hop. But if baby, I'm the bottom, you're the top. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe it. Ladies, 
I like to give them a real hard time. Like to make them sigh. Like to make them cry over. Like to make them fall. Like to make them crawl over. Like to make them weep. Like to make them creep after me. Rats, da da da. Hiya, David. All right. How, How are you doing? Okay. Enjoying yourself? Yeah, really nice. Good. Where did you get that song you did earlier? That's far out. Oh, I wrote that. That's just on an album that I'm just going to get together. Yes. Probably out around September. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. I understand you're also in a movie that's coming out very soon with that's Ringo right. Starr. Yeah, yeah. It's a lovely reaction. I'm really pleased. That's far out. What is the name of the movie? I'll tell you what. If, if you can go diddly diddly d. Dun dun dun, on the guitar. Diddly dee. I'll tell you. Okay. Diddly diddly dee. Dynamite. Well, that'll be the day when wow. you say goodbye. <laughs> that'll be the day when you make me cry. You say you're gonna leave. You know it's a lie, cause that'll be the day when I die. Will you, you give me all your loving and your turtle loving? All your hugs and kisses and your money to wear. You say you love me, baby, and then you tell me maybe that someday, well, I'll be blue. Well, that'll be the day. Ooh, ooh, that'll be the day. Yes, it will. Ooh, ooh, that'll be the day. Ooh, ooh, that'll be the day. When I die. Every day. Oh. It's a getting close. Going faster than a roller coaster. Love like yours will surely come my way. Hey, hey, hey. It's a getting faster. Everyone say.
Once upon a time in the land of Hushabai, it was round about the wondrous days of yore, they, they came across a sort of box bound up with chains and locked with locks. And it was labeled, kindly do not touch. It's war. A decree was issued round about, all with a flourish and a shout and, and a gaily colored mascot tripping lightly on before. Don't fiddle with this deadly box or break the chains or pick the locks. And please, don't ever play about with war. Well, the children understood. Children happened to be good. They were just as good around the time of yore. They, they didn't try to pick the locks or break into that deadly box. They never tried to play about with war. Mommies didn't either. Sisters, aunts, uh, grannies neither. Because they were quiet and sweet and pretty in those wondrous days of yore. Well very much the same as now. Not the ones to blame somehow for opening up that deadly box of war. But someone did. Someone battered in the lid and spilled the insides out across the floor. Sort of bouncy, bumpy ball made up of guns and flags and all the tears and horror and the death that goes with war. And it bounced right out and and went bashing all about and bumping into everything in store. And, and what was sad and most unfair is that it didn't really seem to care much who had bumped, or why, or what, or for. Now, bump the children mainly. And I'll tell you this quite plainly. It bumps them every day, and more and more, and, and leaves them dead and burned and dying, thousands of them sick and, and crying. Because when it bumps, it's really very sore. And there's a way to stop the ball. It, it isn't difficult at all. All it takes is wisdom. And I'm absolutely sure that we could get it back into the box and bind the chains and lock the locks. No one seems to want to save the children anymore. Well, that's the way it all appears because it's been bouncing around for years and years, and in spite of all the wisdom whiz since those wondrous days of yore. And the time, the time they came across the box, bound up with chains and, and locked with locks, and labeled, kindly do not touch, it's war. Jimmy Newman, the morning is come, the engines are rumbling, the coffee's all brewed. Get up, Jimmy Newman, there's work to be done. Why do you lie there still sleeping? There's a waiting line for me to use a latrine. The sun is just opening the skies. The breakfast they're serving just has to be seen. You've only to open your eyes. Get up, Jimmy Newman. My radio's on. The news is all bad, but it's good for a laugh. The tent flap is loose. The peg must be gone. Why do you lie there still sleeping? The night nurse is gone. The sexy one's here. And she tells us such beautiful lies. Her uniform's tight on her marvelous rear, and you've only to open your eyes. Get up, Jimmy Newman, you're missing the fun. They're loading the plane, Jim, it's time to go home. It's over for us, there's no more to be done. Why do you lie, they're still sleeping. It's stateside for us, Jim. Jimmy Newman, and show them you heard. Oh, 
to me, just show them you're sleeping. A joke is a joke, but there's nothing to gain. Jim, I slap you, but I'm too weak to rise. Get up, damn it, Jimmy, you're missing the plane. And you've only to open your eyes. And you've only to open your eyes. Oh, my God, Jimmy, open your eyes. Thank you very much. That was, that was written by Tom Paxson. It's a great song. Uh, I know what you're thinking. You're sitting out there thinking, sure he sings, plays guitar. When is he going to do that gymnastic stunt he's been telling us about? Wait, wait till you see it. Hey, you guys, come on out. Get up. Oh, man, this is going to be so far out. I can't believe it. We have been working on this thing all week, hours hours we spent so I could get it together to do this. You know, this is highly involved work that we're doing. You guys ready? Wow! can't believe it. <laughs> the old juggling bit does it again. I'll tell you, that is something. Now, you know, it's difficult. I know it's difficult to find something to follow the old juggling bit. But we have something prepared tonight that you are not going to believe. We have the folks here in the audience are going to sing with us. They got some stuff we're going to do. It's a Beatles song, When I'm 64. The ju man, that was, thanks you guys, that was so far out. Is everybody ready out there? Okay, me too. One, two, three, four. John Denver will be back next Sunday at the same time, 7.30. Will you still need 